The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, my name is Leo Connors, and welcome to The Ring and all other sports. As you can see, I got a co-host today. Yes, you do. Dave Forney and my good friend and our special guest, Johnny Fabulous, oh. Mr. John Cena Sr. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me on. Thank you. Dave, that was all Dave. That's why well, he's sitting here. We saw him at the show with Bill Ricker, and I said, you know, Leo, you've been waiting to get him on, so that was the time to ask. So thank you, John. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. It's going to be fun. Yes. So we got a bunch of questions. Uh, it's good that Dave's sitting next to me so he can read some, too. Dave, absolutely. why don't you take the first one? Um, so, John, you know, we know your son, obviously, big involved wrestling. How did you actually get involved with the independent scene in the New England area? Great question. I got involved on the independent scene because Knuckles Nelson was looking for a ring announcer. So I went down to the Salisbury Pavilion with that leaky roof and everything else, and that uh, tried out. And Knuckles said, wow, great set of pipes, probably use you, but I've already got somebody. And I said, no problem, I've got somebody else, and I did. I had another couple lined up because they had called John, and remember, John was already in the business. Right. So I'm second generation. Um, I used to promote, didn't wrestle. So I said, no, it's all, he said, no, 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 hold on, hold on. He said, get a look I like, he said, but I need a heel manager. Well. I'd just gone through a divorce. Right place, right yeah. time, right heel. So we're talking and we said, but the name's gotta be catchy and we've gotta have a great gimmick. And um, so Johnny, first name Johnny. Yeah, it sounds good. Can't use Johnny Cash, can't use Johnny Money. I said, you know, whatever we pick has gotta be fabulous. Bang. Oh, Johnny Fabulous hit the scene uh, in Salisbury, Massachusetts and um, so now I go into John Cena Sr. and Johnny Fabulous. But Fabulous, when he's a villain, is a not a very nice person. No, definitely no, not. not a very nice <laughs> definitely <person>. not. <laughs> I remember you hitting a few people with the briefcase at those wrestling style Hitting with the briefcase. I remember that when I first debuted uh, for Knuckles at Star Wars Wrestling, um, they had Miss New Hampshire there. I guess, and you know me, I'm ruthless when it comes to promos. I just cut one on her. I guess it was so bad she started crying. Oh. So, um, but that was fun. Knuckles, uh, I have a lot to thank him for. And he's a great professional. Yes. Great guy. Great guy. He's been a guest here a couple of times. Love Knuckles. He's a great guy. And so that's how Johnny Fabulous, John Cena Sr., got involved in the wrestling end wow. of professional wrestling. Nice. Well, let's jump. We're going to jump right to that one. Absolutely. Then. What are your memories of wrestling Star Wars? And uh, which was the first place that Dave remembers seeing you? I'm pretty sure that was the first time I saw you, too. <laughs> Star Wars was nothing but fun. Knuckles always had crazy ideas. I'd come up with some nutty ideas. Freight Train was there. Big Jim Guns was there. Uh, he trained with Knuckles Nelson. Um, I guess there are a lot of highlights, but... Um, I guess one of the, the things is I used to throw money, my million dollar bills. Well, I my thought daughter still has a couple of I those. thought we'd throw out gold <laughs> coins. And Knuckles said, don't do that. They'll throw them back in. Yep. Well, they did. Yeah. They, <laughs> they threw them back in. So that was a night to remember. Um, I guess that, you know, you can't pick one thing right. that sticks out in your mind. But that that's a memorable thing. I think the most memorable thing is becoming part of what's there. And the one night that we had 20 people, I think, or 30 people, um, was a small house. And who was in the back row? John Cena Jr. Wow. and his girlfriend. Yeah, that was a highlight for him to come and see, as he says, the old man yeah, yeah. do his thing. That's awesome. That is the, you want to go right funny, to that? Funny story. Yeah. Uh, you know, John was at an autograph signing right about one of the times I'd seen you at Wrestling Star Wars. So me and my friends went down. It was out Spooky World. So we went up to him and went, you're Johnny Fabulous' son. And he just started cracking up because we weren't like, you're that John Cena. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> well, anybody that goes up to him and says, and this is, this is, I guess, standard operating procedure, you'll hear, hey, I know you. 
you're John Cena's dad. He said, I feel awful bad for you. I do. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's just like, uh, he's a good kid. He's a good kid. So we already got that one, right, yes. Dave? Okay. So um, did you watch wrestling growing up? And uh, if so, who are your favorites? I did watch wrestling growing up. Um, I come from an Italian family. I grew up on Rantoul Street in Beverly. And so every Saturday morning, I would go to my grandfather's on Home Street, which is a shot walk. Um, and 9 o'clock, we'd turn on wrestling. And um, I'll tell you, the funny part is my grandfather was a great Western fan. So he would say, you can watch the rest of 10 o'clock at the done. A lone range you're going to become at the house. So uh, I would miss a lot of it. Uh, but there was Walter Killer Kowalski. There was Yukon Eric. Wow. Haystack Calhoun. Um, you know, I go back a long way when I look at some of these guys. You know, Greg Gagne. Um, and you, you sit back and you say to yourself, wow, has it changed? Mm. But I was involved at the very beginning. I was a fan of pro wrestling. Um, if you look at any of the tapes that I've done, I always say the same thing, and Cena backs me up. I was the first guy to get cable TV so that kids and I could watch pro wrestling nice. on, on TV. Uh, so, yeah, I guess you might say I'm a little bit of a fan. And yeah. as I say to everybody, I say, I'm a Mark. Right. But if we weren't Marks, we wouldn't be in this business. Exactly. So we have a lot of fun. True I've, statement. This year, I've been a fan for 50 years. I'm 57 years old. I started watching in 1972. So the TV that you were watching probably was before the TV when they were doing it. Nah, what were some of those buildings in Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah, like the field house. Yeah, the, the field house. Up, and yeah. I think was it was that when you were watching it wasn't the stuff from the early 70s at early first, Early stuff, right? early stuff, early okay. stuff. Um, Gordon Soley was the ring and was wow. the uh, commentator, commentator. And what I would used to do is I would drive in to Channel 25, Walter Killer Kowalski had his live show there. Bedlam in Boston. Bedlam in Boston, yeah. Right, and um, so I would go, and uh, one of the wrestlers, uh, when we had the mission into Michigan, so what promotion do you work for? I said, no, I just have a big mouth. He <laughs> said, I'm gonna talk to Walter about you. And I said, no, you know, and, and I became good friends with a great man, Walter Killer Kowalski, gentle giant, big heart, great human being, great loss. Right. Um, but I watched Gordon Soley, I watched all those guys, you know, uh, coming up the junkyard dog. Uh, the things that these, this generation will never, ever have the opportunity to see because when I took John and my son Dan, I have five kids, Stephen, John, Dan, and Matt, and John and Dan used to come with me to the matches. And when I took them to one of the high schools, Jake the Snake Roberts was on the card. Wow. And I'll tell you, in his day, he still got it. Don't oh, get yeah. me wrong. Oh, yeah. Uh, still got it. Um, but, you know, people would say to me, well, you know, you, you, you're wealthy. No. Uh, those seats we had. Right. Nosebleed. <laughs> like and, our seats. And Dave. let me tell you what. I'm afraid of heights. Really? I'm afraid of heights. Uh, I fell off a ladder, and that, that did it for oh, me. Wow. Um, so... I'm afraid of heights, but we'd always go whenever get high school shows or whatever. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I go back a long way. Nice, nice. nice. You want to go with that one? Sure. Um, who do you think? You know, since you're such a big wrestling manager, who do you think was the greatest wrestling manager of all time? This is that's a lot of people to go through. <laughs> you know, that's a loaded question. For you, I to, definitely want to give you guys my answer up. For, for you to try to hit me, and say of all the managers around, who was the best? In my time, I only can say Bobby the Brain Heenan. That man uh, could do it all. Right. Second to him would be Captain Lou Albano. I did have a chance to not work with, but promoted a show at Salem State College with the Grand Wizard. Oh, wow. Um, that, that guy was awesome. Awesome. Um, but when you talk about managers who could not only be the mouthpiece, but do the job and get into the ring. That's what's missing today. Um, those guys, Heenan would get in there and, and talk shit. The Weasel would always be there. Uh, Albano, yep. you know, I did a lot of shows with Lou Albano oh, wow. uh, on the indie side. What a great human being he was. You had a lot of other guys throughout history. I mean, you get Jamie Cornette. Yeah. Um, you know, in his little tennis racket. And he's always talking about his mama. Yes. And so all of us would sit around and say, okay, what do you think? Uh, and I had the opportunity to meet Jim Cornette uh, when John was down at OBW. 
So guys, guys like that. But I, I think I'd stick with the top three that I gave you. Nice. I like. I'm. I'd say Gary Hot. In my opinion, he's he's up. And all the guys you named were great too. But I thought you were going there when you said to back him up, being tough, because Gary was known to carry that little blade with him everywhere he goes. He did. And if you mess with him, he had no problem cutting you. No, no, that's um, streets of Chicago. Well, he's you know, a tough kid. I think a lot of things that people don't realize about the professional wrestlers and about some of the managers back in the day, they were hardcore. Right. You didn't mess with them. You know, um, a lot of people say, ah, oh, I kicked the stuff on that. You understand that when you get involved in the business, you have a martial arts background. Right. Some of these guys, and don't play the game because you just might fool yourself. Yep. And, and you hit the nail on the head. That gentleman wouldn't spare one second. Yep. I think one name that was my favorite, especially yeah. from this list, is Fred Blassie. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Classy Freddie Blassie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's up there. And yeah, but notice, he was the one that always had the foreign guys. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong, Albino had like the, the uh, Samoans. Few, yeah, yep. but I mean, for the most part, if you watched it, Blassie always seemed to have guys from other countries. And uh, he did have some from the United States, but. Freddie Blassie was classic. I mean, you, I guess I'd put him in the, in the top four. Right. But classy Freddie. Blassie, pencil like gates, the whole bunch of you. I remember doing a show at Salem State. We promoted it. And they're all coming in for the show. And the, the police officers came over and said, there can't be any blood or any swearing. So I said, okay, there'd be no, swe you know, no swearing, all no right. blood. And, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. And, you know, Freddie always. <laughs> yeah, he filed his teeth. False teeth. Um, filed them down. I did. He yeah. did file them down. And um, so I'm sitting with the commentator ringside. Freddie's in the ring, pounding this stuff out of this guy, and he comes down and grabs the chair. I said, Freddie, he said, get the out of the chair. I said, okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and uh, Stan, Stan uh, the man Stasiak, I work with him. Um, you know, I've been very fortunate. Right. Um, but there was a classic, and the reason Blassie, I think, did more with the foreign wrestlers was because Blassie could get heat so easy. You know, if you look at today's managers, and I'm going to digress for a second, Paul Heyman is a perfect example. Doesn't have to open his mouth. Right. They hate the, the facials guy. alone. Yes. And take the best, and I'm going to say this, outside of Sherry, the best female manager of today's time, Vicky Guerrero. That I like Vicky. That excuse. All she'd have to do is walk out of the stage, excuse, and the crowd would go nuts. Crazy. And the young people today in the business, and I'm still in it, should learn. Right. Because that's how I did. I watched tapes. I learned. I learned. And if you don't, if you go out there to do your stuff and be the star, you're a falling star. Because it ain't about you, brother. It's about everybody else that's in that ring. So learn from those guys. But today's Vicky Guerrero, Paul Heyman, just take a look at the way they work. Right. Excellent. So true. All right, um, so who has been your favorite to manage? I'm sure you probably have a couple. You know, I, I really can't say that there's been one that has really stood out with me. Right. Um, because you have to remember that when I first started in this business as a manager, I was a heel. Right. So I took the dirges of the business, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, and we came out there and, you know, Knuckles Nelson. I, I, I work with Knuckles Nelson. Uh, great guy. Right. Um, you know, but I look back on some of the young kids, Brian Malonis. Um, you know, he's a great guy that, that's out there. I work with chaotic and I was doing commentary and then I did a couple of and that's what got me out of there was a Samson bone crusher Samson um, who I predicted would go to WWE but the owner of chaotic swore that would never happen just like Kofi Kingston right. um, bad guy I won't say any more than that um, but uh, Samson gave me a beat down and that's what let you know if I lost I had to spend five minutes in the ring with him um, so I've managed a lot of heels in a lot of times, um, I've met some uh, young female uh, wrestlers. Um, there are a lot out there. You can't pick one. Right. I really can't. Okay. That's fine. Um, when you worked for Chaotic, were you doing the commentary with Rich? Rich Palladino. Nice. He's the man. I'll tell you, 
Uh, nothing but kudos for that young man. He's still going at it. He's yeah. a great human being, big heart. And if you talk about a mark, he's with us. He's right. Rich he Bell was here and last week. Him he's and John the man. Walters. I wish I'd, there's a, John Walters. Okay, you asked me about some of the people that I really enjoyed working, being a manager for. Yeah. John Walters. Nice. I managed that guy. We had a lot of fun together. Um, I didn't know he was still wrestling. Is he still wrestling? or Not really. He came back and did a couple shows for Ring of Honor. And oh, yeah, when yeah, they yeah. did that, yeah. He is going to be doing the big time wrestling show in June. Oh, yes. Wrestling against Danny Miles. Yes. Oh, in with June. Um, with Steve Perkins? Yes. Yep. Another great outfit. Yeah, Another you've worked for outfit. them plenty of times, I have, too. yes, we'll, I have. We'll get to them. I, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I, <laughs> I had a lot of things happen with those people. Really? In the ring. No, no, great. No, good things. Okay. I mean, a figure four from Ric Flair, the punch from Ken Shamrock. Wow. I mean, the ah uh, from Mick Foley. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to it. That's uh, awesome. All right. So uh, talk about um, a little bit, you know, speaking of different things you've done, Showcase Pro Wrestling. And your feud there with Gary Gold. The nature boy, the nature Gary boy. Gold. <laughs> he doesn't get brought up here enough either, he though. Honestly, he doesn't, which, you know. Um, I have to tell you about Gary. A tremendous human being. I, I really mean that. Um, you know, you probably, you best of all, know me. If I get something to say, good or bad, I'll say it. Yeah, right. Absolutely. But it won't be behind your back. I'll say it to your face. If you like me, fine. If you don't like me, I'll never see you again anyway. So it right, really gives right. a damn. Yeah. Um, but I'll call it like I see it. So if, if anybody thinks for one minute you and I are sitting here and I'm saying, oh, he's a great guy or she's a great woman, let me tell you something. I'll tell you a few stories about people that aren't such great guys right. or such great women. But Gary Gold is a great human being. Um, Dan Marotti, God rest his soul, uh, was working on an angle that I was against all the way. Right. Uh, that was the baby angle. That was, I walked out over that. I don't know wow. if you know that or not. No, I dude. left a Boston wrestling because of that. Um, I do not tolerate very well humiliating people because of size, because of disability. I'm not a fan. Right. And, and I don't tolerate it at all. At all. And um, so I get on a showcase with Chris, and they say, you're going to be managing whoever, but you're going to be going against Gary Gold. So my first thing is, let's change it. Gary Old is coming out, um, <laughs> and, and then he grew his hair. Um, he, if you've seen him, he, he has long hair yeah, now. Girl, yeah, I don't know if he's cut it or not. But the last show I did down there, um, I haven't been down in a while. They keep asking, but I, I just got to find time to go. Um, he looks like Ben Franklin. So, um, <laughs> you know me. It's an opportunity, why not take it? I, said, I think I know you want a half dollar. Don't uh, a hundred dollar bill, maybe? Um, but the way it worked out was was kind of crazy because I'm managing all these people against Gary Gold, who is truly a great technician. The one match I remember, I was managing Gary Gold, and there was this young man, I won't mention his name, who wanted to be an MAA fighter, MMA, and uh, <clears throat> we, we talked out back, and he said, I promise we won't pick up your son, and, uh, you know, he's going to we'll go good. All right, fine. First thing he gets to the ring, he says, so, Cena seniors out there, what about your kid? I could whoop his ass too. And I'm going, okay, that, well, that's fine, that's fine. So I get in the ring and I cut a promo on him. And you do understand that we do work our butts off in that ring and we do put our lives in each other's hands. Okay, so apparently this kid doesn't understand that because he throws a baby carriage in there. And the next thing I know, he nails Gary right here. He hits the bottom and he can't breathe. This is the truth. We had to have an EMT come out. Oh, wow. And Gary's laying there and I went over to him and I said, are you all right? And he goes, oh man, when I get up, I'm gonna kill him. I said, Gary, don't do that. It's not worth it. He's not worth it. He really isn't worth it. And so we called the match. And I'll tell you how professional Showcase Pro Wrestling is. I, I like to associate myself with those people who are professional. Right. Atlantic Pro Wrestling, uh, Showcase Pro Wrestling, uh, Cousin That's Larry. Chris Blackhawk, correct? Yeah, Chris Blackhawk. Yep. I just yep. saw him recently. Cousin yeah, Larry up in Maine. Um, Br uh, uh, Brickhouse Baker. Yep. He's doing a reunion. Yes, yep. I want to go to that. He, he yes. called me and asked me to do August 13th, I yes. think it is. I think I have a wedding that day. Wow. 
well, I'm trying to work something out. I, if I, and he, he called me, he asked me if I'd come down. I'd like nothing more than to reunite with Brickhouse Baker because we laughed. They laughed when we said, we're going to do a dog food thing, and it won't go. They said, nah, nah, ain't going to work. We got eight shows out of that. Wow. Eight shows. Out of that but angle. Anyway, to tell you how much the boys That's in the really back good. care about us who are in the ring, as soon as that kid went backstage, yeah. he didn't have a chance to change. His bag was packed, and they threw him out the door. And he was never welcome again. However, he was he was given an award. I I wouldn't attend. So I think I know who it is. Mm, all right, we so, can talk off. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's I know exactly. Anyway, who it is. Gary Gold was a pleasure to work with. He's a pleasure to work with now. Um, the feud was great, and you know how it worked out. I eventually ended up managing Gary Gold. Nice. That's awesome. Didn't you at one point wrestle Gary on one of the shows? I did. Um, I, I, the first feud I had with Gary Gold was when Chris Sitaro had Powerhouse Wrestling. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. That's how the feud started. And then it just kept going and going and going and going. It was me against Gary Gold. Um, and obviously, I'm not a technician like these people. But you know what? We can make it look good. Absolutely. Nice. You brought up Dan Marotti, the late Dan Marotti. Um, any MWF thoughts and memories about Dan, who was a controversial guy, but I'm just going to say it myself, he always treated me great. Always. And I had a lot of dealings with him. You know, there's a fellow that's um, bigger than all of us, and I believe it was his statement that said, let he who's without sin, let him cast the first stone. Uh, Dan had his issues. I don't think there's one of us that can sit here and say we don't have or haven't had an issue. Right. Um, but I will tell you this, he had a big heart. He cared about the business. He cared about the talent. And he cared about the older wrestlers. Um, there's all kinds of stories out there. Um, and I already told you, I walked. I right. walked twice. You know, you were there. Right. Yeah. I walked. I don't tolerate bullshit, right? right. If I can say that. Yep. I don't tolerate that. And I told him right up front. And um, then eventually I came back. Uh, he did a lot for um, uh, Special Olympics. Uh, family was most important. Um, you know, he cared about the shows he put on. I'm not so sure it was about the money, but given right. the, giving the fans a quality show, um, he would always bring in uh, people that you, like the Berserker was coming in. Yep. You couldn't get his autograph. So he always thought about the fans. He always thought about the business. As a human being, um, were there some traits that perhaps you or I might not have liked? I gotta say, yeah, I I'm not gonna say, and I'm right. sure when he looked at me, you know, he would say there's some traits he didn't like about me either. Um, but in all in all, MWF was founded by, or Boston Wrestling was founded by a young Dan Marotti yep. and a young man named Neil Menelowen. I did not know that. Neil was his partner. Okay. And uh, those guys began that, and, and Dan liked to refer to Tony Rumble. Whether that information is true or not, I have no idea. Right. I'm not going to cast any stones on the water. I don't know if it was true or not, but he and Neil started that. Neil went in a different direction, and Dan kept going forward. 20 years, Dan wow. brought that to fruition. And um, it's hard for me to say it, but um, I had talked to him on Monday, and on Tuesday, he's dead. He slipped and fell uh, in the bathroom. Wow. There were all kinds of stories out there. He was involved in a car accident. Not true. Um, so it, just, you know, again, say what you want. I remember the good things. Right. There's a lot of bad things I can remember about a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And that you and you can yeah. remember about me. So you know what? Let the past be the past. All I can say is nothing good about him or something good about him. Right. Reiterate that. Something good about him because he was a good, genuine human being. And he did put on great shows. Like you were saying how he would bring like Berserka, but he was also bringing in guys like Homicide, Jay Lethal. I managed and Homicide. And using the top guys around here. I managed that guy. Yeah. I managed. And I actually gave the FU at that show. Nice. Um, so, and I still do that yeah. once in a while. Um, so he brought in key players. Right. Um, I remember the last show he did, the last show he did, uh, we had brought in, uh, he brought in uh, Bushwhacker Luke. Oh, no. <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite friends, shout out to you, Bush. Um, but um, 
he was saying, damn, I got my bag packed. I, I didn't think I was just going to sign. He was ready to wrestle. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if you know this about a Bushwhacker Luke, <clears throat> excuse me, but he's in Wikipedia as being one of the oldest, the oldest professional wrestler to still work the ring. Well, I saw him work two years ago, maybe three, at uh, LPW. And he looked great. He was so kind to everyone that went up to him. I had a nice picture with Isaiah, my grandson. Oh, great. He's he a great was person. just a super, super guy. They're all good. You know, I mean, Marty Gennetti, Marty has his own problems. Yeah. You know, there are demons in all of us. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we either conquer them or they conquer us. Right. Um, you know, Medusa was sweet. You were, I think you weren't at that show. I was uh, not at that one, no. Medusa was there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, Mish Oscar was there. Uh, Doink the Clown 2 was there. Uh, my favorite guy of all times, Bobby Backlund was there. Uh, I think the world of that man. Nice. I really do. Did um, we just see we just him, him at uh, big time, Stephen, right? Stephen Terry's last show, yes. He's such a great... Where's the, the show going to be this time? For Same time? place, Webster Same Town place, Hall. Webster. Yeah, Webster. Webster, Town Hall. I, I don't go there. No? no I don't go there. So. Well, I know you had some involvement before, so... Yeah, I don't go there, yeah. so... <laughs> but I, that was the first time I ever went to Big Time Wrestling. We went to when the Hotties were just there. The Hotties, the SAT, the Briscoe Brothers. And I'm a tag team guy. I, I mean, I love all wrestling, but I love tag teams. And it was just a great show. We had a blast. It was a good time. Now, speaking of MWF, and we were talking yeah. about managers before... I know Dan had a good friendship and a guy I used to bring in prior to his untimely death, Paul Bear. Bill Moody was a good friend. Uh, Bill and I uh, used to talk all the time. Um, Bill would give Dan a lot of advice. Whether Dan would follow it or not, that's another story. Right. Um, you know how Paul Bear became Paul Bear. They were looking for a manager for The Undertaker. And they were interviewing all these folks. And so Bill Moody would sit and say, and, and you know, um, they were telling me, I'm sitting there doing this interview, and they're saying, you know, he's got to understand this is about death and funerals. And he said, I'm laughing inside because you know that Bill Moody yep. is, was a licensed funeral director at his own funeral home. So it worked out so well. And the words of Bill Moody, uh, I think, will, will ring forever when he said, the streak should never end. But that was uh, Undertaker's decision, I guess. Right. But Bill yeah, Moody, was. what a great human that. being, big heart, big heart, great personality, always reached out, kind to the fans, kind to people. I think when his wife passed, yeah. I think that's when things began to change a little for Bill. But um, what a great person. Uh, a lot of the stars I wish were still here aren't right. with us anymore, and he's one. Great person. So many people say so many great things about him, too. So it's, you know, obviously he's like that. He would, after every show. Right. Uh, we went down to North Carolina. That's where we got that, that me, the you know, screwing the people up here. Just business. Um, Bill Moody was down there. And after every match, he would sit with those kids and say, you know, if it were me, I might do this. I would probably think about this. Don't be so hot on that. Um, you know, and, and that favorite line, my Undertaker <laughs> that was will awesome. live forever. Absolutely. He's a great, great human being. And Dan Marotti, if you notice the start of every show, would be the Paul Bearer gong. And right. every set that we had, there was the urn. And we always had the Paul Bearer Christmas drive for the kids. So it worked out well. It's yep. awesome. Before we move on from the MWF, I do have to bring up one more name. Commissioner Von Johnson. <laughs> you, you really don't want me to. <laughs> that might take up the rest of the show, Leo. <laughs> uh, I met Chris. <laughs> when I was called by Dan Marotti and asked if I'd become part of uh, MWF Boston Wrestling, he said, we'll do a shoot, pull up in the car, and uh, the commissioner will be waiting for you in front of Dunkin' Donuts. I had no idea that this guy was talking to a head of cauliflower. Honest to God. <laughs> I um, believe it. Uh, uh, how do you talk about, you know, I guess when you talk about, what do we say in the business? When you start believing your own shit, you're in trouble. Yes. He believed his yes, own shit. Yes, he did. That's all I'm going to say. But I will say this to you also. I was treated with respect by that gentleman, and I gave him respect in return. Right. He was a great human being, but like all of us, 
sometimes we get caught in our own world. And I think that's what happened to Commissioner Von Johnson. Yeah. I used to talk, he used to call me all the time, drive me crazy, but he was a kind guy. He really was, you yeah, know? we just had recently had a chance to run into him at a yeah. show recently. Oh, did you? And yeah. I haven't How's he seen doing? him in over 12 years. Poor guy's years. got some, some medical issues going yeah. on and stuff, so he's not doing as well as you would like, but it was good to see him. Yeah, uh, definitely I hope, he, I hope he's okay yeah. because, you know, he, he always, always was respect back and forth, and I think that's what's missing in this business is respect. Right. Um, but he was a great guy. I, you know, I can give you some stories about him, um, like talking to a cauliflower head right. or um, <laughs> doing some stuff at shows that isn't yeah. right. But, yeah. And I don't mean that in a bad way. No. You know, but uh, let's put it this way. Von Johnson was different. Yes, yeah. he absolutely was. You want to take one of these? He was definitely unique, that's for sure. That one. So were you involved, um, you know, we talked a little about chaotic wrestling and there was the benefit show they did for one of your other sons. Uh, were you involved with getting Vince McMahon um, to wind up appearing at that show? Yes. Wow. Um, I was my son, Daniel, who's a police officer. He was involved in a head-on collision with a drunk driver. And thank God, thank, and I mean this, thank you, Jesus. Um, another five to 10 inches, if you saw that cruiser, you had never expected this kid walked out with nothing but a broken leg. Wow. So the Lord was with him. If you don't have faith, that's your business. Yep. Yep. I happen to have it. Absolutely. So God was with him. And um, I remember talking to the owner of Chaotic Wrestling. I needed a promotion. Um, I wish now I would have thought about somebody else. But um, I, was on the, I was on the phone. Or, um, we're talking, and I hear this voice in the background. Put me on the poster. I'm going to be there. I'm going, no, that's he, Vince yeah, McMahon. Yeah. Vince McMahon? Right. Never happened. Um, and I got to tell you, I'm going to digress. People can say whatever they want about Vincent Kennedy McMahon. You're all wrong. Right. He's got the biggest heart, the kindest heart, and he'll do anything for anybody. He's a businessman. Right. So you know what? Period. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, anyway, um, yes. Uh, and then when I got down to Connecticut, uh, we had to go down and, and talk to John Laronitis. Um, and uh, the Fink showed me around. And uh, I always tell the story because I like to zing the guy that owned Chaotic. I get into where well, they have all the uh, paraphernalia that they sell. And so I said, I need a spinner. And he said, you'll never get a spinner belt for that show. And I said, I will. So I needed some autographs. And Yes, don't worry about it. And the guy said to me, hey, does your driver want anything? And I said, that was the highlight of my day, <laughs> the driver. Mr. <laughs> Cynical, who shit on everybody. Um, and then we sit down at the table with Ann Russo, and um, uh, she's going over the stuff. She said, you will have a spinner belt. There will be autograph. It was just wonderful. And so the night of the show, I was very vocal, and John told me to shut up. Um, literally and so we get in the ring and I said Vince said he'd be here and um, John said that's not happening so John was special guest referee right. Sherry uh, now Todd Hansen's uh, wife or fiance yes. I don't know, is it his wife I, I, think, fiance. I think fiance yeah. they're okay. not married yet they're a great couple anyway yes. so sh I grab her she gives me a kiss and Malonis now was in the ring he was fighting, um, it was Rick Fuller, I think. Yes. Yep. And so, bang, I get popped. I'm outside the ring. I'm down. I get up, and I look, and guess who's in the ring? Oh, Vincent Kennedy incredible. McMahon. Because you know me. I'm going, what are you doing in my ring? Whatever I want. I said, okay. And that's when him and John, John gave him the FU, and he, and he went out. Um, but I can't thank him enough. That night, that night, uh, we raised over $40,000. That is awesome. And um, all that money, uh, and when I did that, when I put that show together, it was for no other reason than to fight drunk driving. Right. And so we gave a check to Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Uh, Dan made sure that the local state police and local police departments had portable breathalyzers. Uh, we gave scholarships so people could get education on it. Um, I can't thank Vince enough for allowing us to use WWE talent in that ring. Yeah. That's they sent amazing. us Eugene, yeah. um, and 
the man himself, and Cena. That's right. just, what else can I say? But yes, I was responsible. How happy were you for that? It was Melotus in the ring now, too. Like Brian Melotus you know? just yeah. couldn't. Because I love Brian. I think he shivered in the last 20 pounds. Uh, honest <laughs> to God, he couldn't believe that, because Vince went over to him and said, are you heel or face? And he said, I'm a heel. All right. So <laughs> it came off well. Um, I'm not going to say any more about what else happened with Chaotic, but that's that's enough. All right. That was great. Um, what was it like, though, for you appearing so many times on WWE television? It was an honor. It was an honor for a little guy and nobody like me. Um, you know, The Rock has a saying, um, know your role. I know my role. I'm no superstar. Um, I have a lot of fun at what I do, and I say this to everybody in the business. If you can't have fun doing what you're doing, get out of the business. Right. This isn't, you know, it's good stuff. Um, I can't thank Vince enough. Um, the only thing I disliked was the kick from Randy Orton. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that tape. Yeah. Um, they said I leaned forward. I say Randy was stiff. Right. Um, busted me open. I was unconscious, six stitches. Um, that was quite a night. But I was so honored to be part of that group. Um, I met a lot of people, uh, saw a lot of things, and learned a lot in that year and a half. I was allowed to be associated right. with the WWE. Yeah. I mean, awesome. they even had that one show where you got your own Titan Tron entrance and everything. Yeah. Where I wrestled yeah. Randy Orton. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and I have to say this. Uh, <laughs> When that, that was the main event, you yes, know. Yes, I was there. That was, that was the main <laughs> event. And so I always get some crap from somebody, and I said, you can say what you want, but I'll tell you this, 400,000 more people tuned in to watch that match. That's incredible. That is, that to is. watch me get my ass kicked. Blaze, put and in my mind. opinion right now, everybody talks about like Kenny Omega and all these other guys, but I still think Randy Orton's the best worker in the business. I really do. Randy's a nice guy, but I'll tell you what. You know, um, if you're in that ring, and I don't know if you've ever been in the ring, I don't know if you've ever been in the ring, uh, once in a while you get some people that work stiff. Right. Cena works stiff. Uh, Triple H can yep. work a little stiff. Uh, Orton works stiff. Right. Um, he's changed a lot, and I have nothing but good words for him. Good. The night of that kick. Right. I can and, imagine. Yeah, I can remember sitting in the, the room with the doctor. <clears throat> There's blood all over my shirt, my face. Vince McMahon is there with his jacket in his hand looking at me in the doorway. And John Laronitis is over there, and they're working on this over here. And I don't know where the hell I was. I, so Vince is going like, John Laronitis walks by, and my jacket's on my lap. He goes, well, Mr. Cena, probably had to please pay to clean your jacket. I go, what the? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> But I had a chance to meet a lot of people backstage, uh, all gentle, all great men, gentle women, right. gentlemen, women, women wrestlers, Stephanie McMahon, outstanding, Shane O'Mac. You can't ask for a better deal. I'm very fortunate, very lucky. God has been very good to me. Nice. Excellent. Um, want to take that one, Dave? Sure. Um, so now let's talk a little bit more about the local area. Who do you think in this area is the next one that will make it big and get signed by WWE or, or a few AEW? guys that yeah, you, that you enjoy you watching more? Because there are a few kids that are, I think are head and shoulders <laughs> above some of the other talent. Well, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to give you anybody's name. Okay. Because I don't believe that WWE is the only game in town. Right. I believe that AEW has got some superior talent. And um, if you notice... The reason I don't want to give anybody's names, and I see, I have worked with a lot of these young people that I think are coming up and, and probably should have a shot. The guy I worked with at Bill Ricca, that kid's got an outstanding, outstanding talent. Um, but who's using him? Right. AEW. So if you notice what, what WWE has done, they've sliced their roster. Yeah. They're letting more go than they're bringing in. Yeah. And then what happens is when they sign these young people, they bring them in, and they get nothing to do with them. So my whole thing is, who's next? You know, I really don't know. I would hope the Punjab would be would right. be one. But AEW, excuse me, has already got their fingers on that kid. Uh, Brian Malonis is, whoever thought that Todd Hansen, and who I absolutely respect as a worker, Tommaso Ciampa, 
What a great worker. I, yeah. I went against him. You remember that at M M M yeah, MWF, Boston Wrestling, when John Bradshaw Layfield was there? Oh, yeah. They shoved the money down my throat and said I should have drunk the Kool-Aid. Tommaso Ciampa, outstanding. Yes. Are there individuals, Kofi Kingston, <sighs> are there individuals out there like that with that kind of oomph? There might be. There probably are. But I don't want to say he's the next one. Right. Or let's be real, folks. She's the next one. We sell the female wrestlers short. I still want to do an all women's wrestling league. I found nobody to back me yet, but Dan Barati, God rest his soul, friend. And um, I think it'd be awesome to have an all woman because they've been sold short. Right. But to say that this kid's going to be the next one, this kid's going to be the next one. Let me tell you something. When they call those kids up and bring them down, it's a cultural shock. Because it ain't the same, brother. Right. And they can't take the heat, some of them. So good luck to whoever is the next one picked. And may you make it to the top. Got and any it comments? could be a female, too. There's good. plenty of female talent around here Absolutely. right now. Some really good upcoming young girls who I could see doing yes. things, you know? Yep. So Following Sasha's footsteps. Well, Sasha's footsteps are right out of WWE. Wow, she's, uh, I don't understand her, and Naomi, her man. That, um, I don't get it, you know? I thought I it was work. I did too at first. I guess it's not. No. Um, and when you, you know, the one thing I've learned in this business is it's not about me. Right. Every time I'd go out and do a promo or bring out a heel or a face, um, I'd always put them over, even outside the ring. And they go, yeah, the manager. It's not my job. My job is to make sure you get heat. Right. And you get the, 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 the you know, the, the, the shine. That's the name of the game. Today's world in professional wrestling, I remember doing a show with Donovan Dijak. I was managing him for APW. And another wrestler who shall be unnamed, but he's the one I gave the FU to at a show. Okay. And the deal was, it was supposed to be a beatdown. Okay. I'm out there putting Dijak over. Who cares? Everybody's strong. He's a giant. You will never beat him. Do you realize that I, we worked so hard to get to that point? His opponent comes to the ring and takes him off his feet. Twice. The match goes 10 minutes. Why? I go to the back, and Donovan wins. Go to the back, and I say, what, what was that all about? You know the answer? I had to get my shine. Wow. No. All you had to get was a beat up, lay right. in the middle of the ring, take the three count, and put them over. That's how it works around here. Yeah. And, um, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're all about you, no, it doesn't right. work that way. It doesn't work that way. All right. We like to play a little game on the show called the name game. If we throw a name at you, say whatever you want. I'm going to remember it. Off. <laughs> Go ahead. You really going to give me that name to start it off with? Uh, yeah, I'll do it. I'm going to even remember to know it. Joel Davis. Who? Joel. <laughs> ah, there we go. That's the answer. All right. Pierre Vachon. Pierre Vachon? Yeah. Uh, the Boucher was a great man. He did a good thing, you know. He, he was a guy to be feared. Yes. Uh, he had a great gimmick. His daughter uh, followed in the footsteps. Um, once again, there are very few people in the business that were feared. Right. Boucher Vachon, when he got in their ring. Yes. D uh, Dylan Cage. Dylan Cage, the man down there in yeah, North Carolina? North Carolina. Wow. I liked him a lot. I, um, I enjoyed working with Dylan. Um, when I went down to North Carolina, he was a face. Oh, wow. Um, he was a face down there. And I was um, a face. How's that grab you? Uh, then I turned to you. But um, Dylan Cage, there's a young man. I do not understand why he was never signed. Right. The ability he has to, what's the word I want to use, uh, maneuver in the ring, the psychology he has about the business, and his ability to cut those scary promos, or when he was the chief or the Indian, those great promos, I don't understand. I had great memories and still do of working with Dylan Cage. As a matter of fact, had nothing happened with MWF, that was next on the plate. Nice. Great, great talent. Um, how about uh, Big Rick Fuller? A friend, a dear friend. I haven't heard from Rick Fuller in years. 
I don't know what happened. I guess he just got out of the business. I think he get tired of it. He did movies. Yes, um, he was in The Fighter. Was it? The Fighter? Yep. The Mickey Ward movie. Yep, he was. He also did that R.I.P. movie, I yep. think. He was one of the uh, villains in that. Um, Rick was a tremendous athlete. He, WCW? Right. Um, tremendous athlete. I enjoyed working with Rick Fuller. I managed him as a heel. And I'll never forget one night, we're in Lynn, Massachusetts, and we're up. And the crowd there was, I, I tell you, brutal, brutal. And you talk about Gary Hart, if he was there, there definitely would have been several bodies on the floor. Um, <laughs> so we're walking out, and all of a sudden, somebody spit and hit Rick. Ooh. I grabbed him. He's going to go right after him. I said, it's not worth it, pal. And then somebody stole my tie. Imagine that, pulled a Johnny Fabulous tie right up. Wow. Um, why are you Ful standing next to Big Rick Fuller? Rick Fuller was a balls. Rick Fuller was a giant. Yes, a gentle giant. He understood the business. He never was afraid to share. He never was afraid to offer advice. Um, his chops. You talk about Rick Rick Flair. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. Rick Fuller. When he gave you a chop, you got the whole pig. Not just the chop. You got the whole pig. I remember a young man. We were down in the western part of the state. And this young man, oh, no, Mr. Fuller, you know, Rick said, you know, it's okay, don't worry. So we get out, and he gave him the first chop. He didn't sell it. I said, oh, this oh, no. not going to happen. Not going to happen. Mistake. Five chops later, yeah. he's bleeding. And uh, welcome to our world. But Rick Fuller, I wish I could say hello. I wish, I don't know where he is anymore, but what a great guy. And it was an honor. These people that are you talking about, Dylan Cage, an honor to manage these people. Nice. Cool. Well, here's another. Uh, let's bring up. Yeah, it got, let's go with them. All right. Then, All right. Then I'll go with the other one yeah. after. Uh, Christian Casanova. Christian Casanova? Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo, now Carmelo Hayes. Let me tell you something. Um, I worked with him at APW. Um, he had the gimmick where he did the moon thing, yeah. the soft hat, you know. And the Michael Jackson, Jackson gimmick. Yes. Yep. Yep. And um, we're sitting back there, and I, I said, you know, I like your work. I really, I really see a lot of potential in you. I think you're going to go there. I, and I'm not bra bragging. Yeah. I just, I can feel it. And this kid was outstanding in what he did. And he would always come back, not only to me, like Stiff Mike, right. um, Big Jing, Big Guns Jim Sargent. Um, what, what can I do to be better? That's what this business needs. Right. I'm so honored, honored that he's where he is today because he's earned it. Nobody handed that kid. Absolutely. Good. Go the right. name that the you name wanted that to. I was going to ask about is <laughs> Kid USA, Jay Gillette. Oh, yes. Jay Gillette uh, is outstanding. His son wrestles. I was supposed to do a show with Jay was there, but apparently he couldn't make it. If you remember, uh, I was a heel, and Jay and his buddies, uh, we had just had a tag match, and I screwed him over. I got in the ring, and the gimmick was we decided right then and there, I had nothing in my pockets. I turned to Jay and I said, tear the jacket right off me. <laughs> right in half. Threw both halves out and then <laughs> knocked me down. There is a young man that, again, why was that kid yeah. never signed? So I, I don't understand. Outstanding a technician in that ring. It wasn't the best of promos. But you put him in a ring? The guy was was awesome. Yeah, and I was always the guy on the other side hoping we could kick his ass. So Jay Gillette is outstanding. Nice. How about our Brian Fury? Brian Fury is another good friend. Uh, he originally purchased Chaotic Wrestling, uh, the school, and the promotion. I believe he's since sold it. Brian is another young man who did uh, some work with NXT, I believe. Went down and... A couple times. I think three times you went yes. down as a guest yes, trainer. That's correct. So um, Brian is another young man that again, I sat back with, watched him work and said, this guy's gotta be signed, but unfortunately was not. Um, another good technician, understood the business. The one thing that we're discussing with all these people is they understood ring psychology, right. which they don't teach today. No, they don't. Uh, any of them, want to go? Uh, Slick Wagner Brown. Yo, I got to <laughs> tell you, there's another guy. Love Slick. RSP, you know, I respect that man to no end. A great technician. He's got his own school. He's asked me several times to come down. 
Hopefully I'll do it this time. But there again, understands the business, understands how to read the crowd, understands how to work in the ring to make it look good and feel good. Um, I remember the first time I worked with him, he was the face, I was the heel manager. He jumped off the ring. And I'm going, what the? He's chasing me around the <laughs> ring. I mean, this guy is amazing. I never had the chance to manage Slick Wagner Brown, but I had the opportunity to work a lot with Slick Wagner Brown. Very fortunate. Another great ring technician. Absolutely. How about a guy that's working behind the scenes at WWE now, NXT? George Carroll. Was you know, it? George Carroll. He used to be George Carroll at DC Dillon, Eddie Edwards. No? All right. How about uh, Eddie Edwards? Yes, I've done a lot of shows with Edwards. We did shows at uh, MWF, Boston Wrestling. Um, matter of fact, we just, Matt Cardona last year did his podcast up there. And who comes in? Eddie Edwards. His wife nice. is a professional wrestler also. Eddie is a great technician, another one that worked hard right. to get where he is today. So nothing but good words and a great shout out to Eddie Edwards. Excellent. Right. Pick any what about uh, back home Bo Douglas? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Bo's had his ups and downs. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, but I will tell you one thing, nothing but respect for that young man. He's an individual who will never give up, um, who constantly is optimistic, who worked the back at the last show we did for MWF Boston Wrestling. Awesome. And when he gets in the ring, there's another young man that understands what needs to happen to make it believable in the ring and listens to the crowd. You know, don't go 25 minutes if there's no noise. Don't go 25 minutes just because you got to get your spots in. Know when to take it home. Yeah. Bo Douglas, another great technician. Nice. Anyway, and nice. I've managed against him. Absolutely. Uh, Benny Jux. Benny Jux. Underrated in my He's opinion. a guy from Boston Wrestling. Um, I remember one time I pissed him off. I thought he was actually going to nail me. Because um, sometimes <laughs> Johnny Fabulous overtakes John Cena Sr. And um, Benny Jux is another guy that I, and he does movies. Um, I don't understand why there's another young man that, that hasn't been at least called to NXT because he's earned it. He's worked it. Everything he's done, he's done it his own. And it's the hard way. He's right. a professional. You look at his moves, they're precise, they're accurate. Um, he's conscientious. He does take care of you in that ring. Again, I've worked and managed against Benny Jukes, and he is the man. Nice. How about um, Pat Dillon? You know Pat? I UFO do. UFO wrestling. He's got a, he has a pro wrestling promotion. Yeah, UFO. I used to work, uh, when we used to do a show at the... Tewksbury Country Club that's not there anymore. They sold it. Um, and a brewery's taking it over next year. Uh, Pat used to run shows with a young lady who we did for cancer. Yes. Um, Pat is awesome. He understands this business. Yep. He's got a great promotion going. And you know, there's another guy that cares about the content and quality of his shows. How do you knock a man like that? All right. I do to a guy like that is say, thanks for allowing me to be part of it. Right. Not sure if you know this guy at all, but he's around the wrestling business. Dante Luna, he's the one that brought the wrestling to <clears> Fenway, <throat> along with Bo and the El Mundo Festival. Dante Luna, I first met Dante Luna uh, in, in Webster. Um, he was doing the video yeah. and um, became very good friends. I gave him some advice. Uh, he brought me into uh, one of the uh, Fenway Park deals. He's a great human being. He has a, a, a great vision yes. for a lot of things. I think sometimes what we need to do is, vision is out here. We sometimes got to bring it a little bit. Right. But um, I have nothing but good words for that young man. He's done a lot for the Spanish community. Yes. And he's done a lot for videography and photography. Yep. Great guy. What about uh, Latin Fury, Luis Ortiz? Oh, man, one of my favorites. <laughs> I cannot say enough about him and John Walters. If you look at the battles those two guys yep. had, when we did the ambulance gimmick at the Knights of Columbus Hall in Methuen. Chaotic, correct? We, yes. Yep, when yeah, Lewis, was bang, John Walters nailed him. The ambulance pulled in, pulled him. Man, oh man, Lewis Ortiz, ultimate professional, another guy. I sit back and say, why? Right. I guess he's not doing it anymore. 
He's kind of backed off. Yeah, a he's, bit. he's he's backed away. I don't think he's wrestled in about a year and a half, yeah. maybe two well, years. You know, it, it's time. Old guys yeah. like me, uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but I'm still out there playing the game. I can't do what I used to. I'll take a few bumps and do right. a few things. Ortiz had a great gimmick. Ortiz made it believable. Ortiz understood. When you put John Walters and Luis Ortiz in that ring, I don't care if they were the only ones on the card. Right. And if it wasn't the main event, it was right. the main event. And I wish Atlantic Pro Wrestling or Showcase or Cousin Larry could get John Walters oh, and man. Luis Ortiz together one for time. one more time. And that would be the name of the match. One more time. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, that, that would be a sellout. Yeah, it would. I want to go back real quick to, to Star Wars, wrestling Star Wars, and just bring up um, a man that passed away that was part of that big Woody. I worked for Big Woody at Atlantic Pro Wrestling. Big Woody was a man that was kind, generous, open-hearted, but could be an SOB because he, again, liked the business. Not liked it, loved it. Um, I worked with him at, um, at Star Wars. He was really involved there. We did a right. lot together. He was really the guy to put all the shows together. Um, and then in Atlantic Pro Wrestling, he was the same way. And there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Right. He just said, this is the way it is. And if you didn't like it, leave. He was an ultimate professional. When I found out he was sick, I didn't know what it was. Right. But then um, Ed, Ed Hunt, said he died. Yeah. He was in hospice. Man, oh, man. It's like, you could have knocked me over the feather with, I was in the car when they told me about Dan Marotti. Right. Neil called me. And then when I got the word from uh, Eddie, Eddie Hunt, I was like in shock. The, the indie world, the wrestling world, lost a great man when they yeah. lost um, Big Woody. And like when you said the SOB, he was a straight shooter. Tell you like it was. Straight yeah, shooter. You know what? If you liked it, fine. If you didn't, what you get out of Woody was yep. the real business. Yeah. So don't think you're going to go to NXT or WWE or AEW and they're going to pat you on the back and tell you how great you are. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, brother. Right. No, no, no. You're going to find out what it's like. We only have a few seconds up. First off, I want to thank you for coming no, thank on. We'd love for to do me. this again. You Anytime. Know? All right. Um, is there anything you want to plug real quick? No, I don't believe there is. I don't. I can't think of anything. Um, I just want the fans to be happy. Great. Thanks again. Thanks, John. Guys, we're out. Peace. Hi, guys. I hope you're enjoying the show. Listen, I could use a little help to grow my YouTube channel. So if you could please like, share, and subscribe. That's most importantly, subscribe. Send me a direct message, and I'll give you a shout out here on the show. My YouTube channel is real simple. It's just my name. Leo Connors. Thanks in advance. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.